Hey, this is Jay. This is an N8N tutorial to use HTTP request nodes instead of the default YouTube node in N8N. Uh, so I created a video in the past about self-hosted um, N8N and being able to upload uh, YouTube videos through that uh, with just like a little bit more control to be able to uh, upload files off of your system and that kind of thing. Um, but I've been getting some comments on uh, one of those videos uh, that there's been a lot of issues, I guess, with N8N in terms of file size and maybe some stability issues and that kind of thing. Uh, so in this case, we're going to call the YouTube APIs directly using the HTTP request nodes instead. Uh, so um, in this case, we are using um, self-hosted N8N so that we can access our files directly. Uh, and um, then we also have, uh, in the past, I guess, if you want to go check out those videos, uh, created a Google client because you will still need to have a Google client um, to be able to get a client and ID uh, client ID and client secret to be able to connect to YouTube. Uh, and in this case, I'm actually going to probably use uh, Google Sheets as well, uh, just to be able to dynamically store the data. Uh, so uh, in this case, though, I have actually been able to upload a 1.5 gigabyte file, uh, so video that's like 18 minutes long, um, through the YouTube APIs um, without the YouTube node in N8N. Uh, and again, I was doing that with local N8N, so self-hosted N8N. Um, I actually ran uh, with this ex this extra parameter here when I started N8N um, locally with the N8N default binary data mode is set to file system. And that way uh, we're not using um, N8N's like default uh, limitations on that. I think they actually uh, restrict the file size pretty heavily. Uh, in this case, we're able to use our system's entire memory uh, to be able to manage files. So in that case, we're more easily able to push a 1.5 gigabyte file without too much of an issue, hopefully. Um, so I'll have that command in the description. Uh, and then after that, um, we are connecting to the YouTube API. So we're going to be connecting to this uh, Google API's uh, YouTube V3 videos uh, and providing our video file that way. Um, so again, I've run through this uh, here successfully uh, and was able to upload actually both of these. So I had some testing uh, to be able to get those files from my computer uh, onto YouTube. And we skipped the YouTube nodes from NADN. Uh, so let's go ahead and start this from scratch just so we can kind of walk through the process. Uh, again, we're going to trigger manually just kind of, you know, however you want to uh, kick this off. But unfortunately, you're going you're gonna to need details about the video. So you can't really just drop the video into a file and have that as a trigger. You need to be able to provide more info about it um, from the beginning, like file location, that kind of thing. Um, so uh, first off, though, I'm going to provide that detail from Google Sheets. So we're going to go ahead and get rows in Google Sheet. Uh, and so I've, I've just created a basic uh, YouTube data upload file sheet. Um, and it just includes like basically the metadata about the file uh, and the file path. So we can kind of have all that in one place. Um, so in this case, we just have the title, the description, the category, uh, the status. So if we want to, you know, automatically publish it publicly or not. And then um, the actual file path for the, the file itself. So, so in this case, an MP4. Um, so all of that I have in a Google Sheet. Uh, and again, you can connect to that Google Sheet um, using your Google client that, uh, that you hopefully already have created. Uh, I have tutorials if you have not. Uh, but in that case, you hopefully already have this set up. Um, in that client, you just have your local uh, URL as your auth redirect and then your client ID and secret. And with all that good to go, um, your local N8N can now connect to Google, Sh Google Sheets. Um, you also, you know, could just run this off like a CSV or something local. So it doesn't have to be. Google Sheets, just an easy way to kind of visualize this. Uh, and especially since the same client can connect to both Google Sheets and YouTube, so you can kind of get a, a little more use out of that client. If it'll actually connect. Oh, man. Uh, I guess we're lagging a little bit. So, all right. Let's 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 wait on that for a minute. There we go. All right, Sheet 1. Um, so let's go ahead and test that, and that should give us all the details about our video. Um, so we need uh, now a multiple step thing here to be able to get the YouTube uh, video to upload. So what we first have to do is actually give some metadata about the upload. Uh, so in this case, when we call this the first time, so we're going to call this this uh, API, um, we have to provide a payload. And so actually, if we hop over here, and I'll have links to these, um, this is just Google's uh, provided documentation. I actually kind of just use perplexity to set up most of this, but um, but in this case, we need to provide the uh, snippet and status. So this is how we provide the metadata about the video itself, and then the status about how we're uploading it. So we need to provide a, a post body like this. Um, so what I'm going to actually do is create a JSON object like that 
to uh, prepare for our call. So in this case, I think we're going to do an edit fields node, and we're just going to drop in manual JSON. Uh, and I'm I'm going to skip tags. Uh, I actually have my channel set up with default tags. Uh, if you you could obviously do dynamic tagging if you wanted to, um, but I don't know how much value there is in that. Uh, so we're going to skip that. Not really worth the effort. Uh, but in this case, we are going to go ahead and replace some of these values. So uh, instead of title, we're going to grab the title from Google Sheet. And try that again. Let's move that up here. Okay, so there's our title. And then description, same deal. All right. And then category, uh, going to grab that dynamically as well. And status, uh, that's one of those where you're probably pretty consistent, but in case you're going to, you know, be dynamic about what status you want to upload with, uh, we'll go ahead and drag that in and we should be, oh wait, is that the right status? Yeah. We want privacy status, not uh, path status. All right. And we'll go ahead and test that. Cool. So now we have this payload. Um, so that is just preparing for our first HTTP request node. Uh, and this is where we're going to make our first call to YouTube to say, hey, we are going to upload a video. Here are the details. Um, and so in this case, uh, actually, I'm going to grab the the full URL from back here. The one I used earlier. Um, it's basically the same as the documentation. Um, so if we go to the video videos update, uh, it's it's this full path, but we're adding on two parameters at the end. Uh, so we have... Upload type we're saying is resumable, uh, just in case you know something happens. I guess you can actually plug in the same URL and continue to upload the same file. Uh, and then part uh, is the other parameter we need here to say snippet and status. And that again comes back from the uh, body that we just created. So um, we just want to let it know that that's the data we're providing. So HTTP request then is like a really broad node, right? You can kind of do whatever you want as far as like posting to a URL. Uh, and there's a lot of flexibility with that. So now you usually have to have some sort of authentication uh, to let YouTube know that you're allowed to call this API. Uh, so in this case, that's where we're going to kind of use like a nice uh, shortcut here. And like I pointed out before, we can just use our existing um, YouTube auth that we've created before for like YouTube um, nodes. Um, and it's just the same uh, authorization kind of setup as the Google client that we use to create or connect to Google Sheets. So in this case, we could just go ahead and grab that YouTube OAuth existing API. Uh, and then, yeah, down here, again, these are the same credentials. You have your OAuth uh, redirect URL already set up for your, your Google client that's over in the Google console that we've already gone over uh, and using the same credentials of ID and secret. So hopefully all of that's been pre-prepared. Uh, pre uh, and then once you've got that connected successfully, the only other thing we need to do here is we need to include that body uh, that we created in the step before. Um, so in this case, I'm actually going to manually do it just because, uh, we want to be able to kind of format it, um, within here, I guess we could drop in the full raw body as well, but, um, we'll just stick with this for now. So in this case, we need that snippet and we can just drag in the whole snippet object. And then, uh, we're going to drag in status. Oh, nope, sorry. Actually, we're just going to call it status. So let's do fixed, we'll call it status, and drag in the privacy status body. There we go. And let's go ahead and call this just to make sure that we're connecting correctly, right? So we should be authorizing with our YouTube uh, credentials from before. And there's really nothing else we need to do here because that will handle all the headers and all that. Uh, query parameters, I think, are accepted automatically. And then we're just including the JSON body to give metadata details about what the video is going to be about. And maybe not quite. So privacy status, I think that's correct. Let's double check. Snippet status. Interesting. Uh, that should be what we need here. Oh. It's the full object. There we go. Got to be consistent about this kind of thing. All right, now let's go ahead and test that. All right. So uh, it successfully sent the request off, um, and 
it came back to saying success, right? We got the green check mark, uh, but it says no fields exist. So uh, that's a bit of an issue because we actually need something back that's called location. Uh, and it's only included in the header. So it's not rec uh, included in a uh, request body or re request response rather. So what we need to do here is we need to add an option. So we're going to come down to the bottom here. So after we've set our body parameters at the very bottom, we're going to do options and we're going to do response. And we want to include response headers and status. Um, so before we run this, uh, we can go ahead and look at this real quick. Uh, over on my channel, I should have a new metadata. So here we go. So though it it's prepared. It's like allocated space to say, okay, I know that I'm going to get a YouTube video. Um, so this is where it needs to go. Uh, so in that case, uh, it has prepared a location. We just didn't return it yet. So once we turn this response headers on, um, we'll go ahead and test that again real quick. There we go. So now we actually get the location. So with this location value, um, we get the URL for our next HTTP request to say here, um, pass off the actual binary file here to upload. Uh, so that's really important. Make sure that yeah, we can get the uh, the response header back. But now we're all set to upload a video. Uh, so the only other thing we need to do is, is go grab that video. Uh, so again, so we're in self-hosted, so we can read that file directly off of the system. So again, so if that's you know running on your computer or running uh, in the cloud or whatever, um, I included again the file path in the spreadsheet. So just to kind of make it a little bit more dynamic, um, you could, I guess, actually be if you're, you know, uh, dynamically, you know, looking for uh, file uploads or a trigger to a new folder or something like that. Um, but in this case, I felt, felt like this makes the most sense. Uh, so if we go ahead and test, we should get a binary data file, even though it's a large file. Yeah, 1.5 gigs, but it's good to go. Um, this node has to be, I think, before the next HTTP request node. So uh, let's go ahead and do that. Because what we're going to do is we're going to call the URL that just was provided earlier um, from our first request. So in this case, we are going to do a put because we are going to put to the location that you, uh, YouTube actually provided us. Uh, and then before we uh, plug in the binary, um, as you can see, like binaries are kind of weird if you haven't used them before. Uh, it, for some reason, overrides all the other previous node information. So you just have to come up here and change the tab. So we're going to go back to schema so we can get access to the uh, remaining data from uh, the rest of the workflow. Uh, we're going to come down to the HTTP request that we called earlier, and right, and we got the location. And now we can just drag location directly in for the URL. So they've already created it for us. Said so like you're, you know, you're good to go. Just send it here. Um, and then in this case, we just need to provide our predefined credentials again, like we did in that last request, to say like you know it's still us. We're still uh, using the same authorization to say we are allowed to do this. Uh, and so yeah, we're connecting to our YouTube existing uh, client credentials. So. Uh, one other thing we just need to do here is just make sure that we then include the body. So uh, we're going to do send body and we're going to not do JSON. We're going to do n8n binary file. And then so uh, we come back over here and switch to the binary tab so that we can get to this, even though it doesn't really matter. All we're going to do is provide the name of the binary. And in this case, is just data. So that's just how n8n automatically handles it. Um, so in this case, we're good to go. Uh, we have kind of pre-declared like, hey, actually, let me double check. Uh, there we go. So this more recent one, um, pre-declared that this one is, hey, the location that we're going to upload a binary file to. So it's it's uh, ready and waiting. So at this point, we are good to go. So if we go ahead and test this, uh, we should hopefully send off our 1.5 gigabyte video file, and it should be uploaded to YouTube. Uh, so this part's usually pretty quick. Uh, we hopefully should get a successful response here, uh, you know, in less than a minute or so. Um, but the upload, entire upload process itself seems to be a little bit slower. Obviously, it's a 1.5 gigabyte file. So, you know, that's going to probably take a little uh, a little while. Um, but we should hopefully get a response in N8N relatively quickly here. Uh, this part usually doesn't take too long. Um, but yeah, as you can see here in the YouTube channel, it's still just kind of hanging out. Um, it looks like it's loading regardless of whether it's actually loading or not, um, because when we created a test test uh, upload earlier this one also has that even though this didn't actually um uh have the uh or we didn't end up actually pulling the location back from that when we switched it uh so if we go back here all right cool so we have the output from uh the second request and that was again the location that youtube provided us to be able to update our video 
Um, so we've sent off the binary file. Uh, so in this case, uh, that's pretty much it for this workflow, uh, which is really nice. So uh, in this case, we then would just kind of come back in here and this is going to take a while. Uh, this takes quite a bit of time for it to start uploading. Um, let's see. At some point you should say, yeah, it's still, it's still saying it'll begin shortly. This one's not going to begin, uh, but this uh, top one should, re uh, should actually begin here in a few minutes. Uh, but that process will take a while. So let's go ahead and uh, I'll, I'll be back with that one in a minute. Okay, and we're, we're getting there. It's still kind of a slow process. I think this ends up usually jumping to like 100%, uh, but this one has actually started uploading. As you can see, it's at 0%, and we can actually cancel the upload. Um, if we come in here, we should see a little bit of activity. Uh, no preview yet, but it should be working on it here uh, in a few. And there we go. Yeah, actually 18 minute long, so that's correct. And we can also verify that it did upload the metadata that we wanted. So I had test uh, testing upload through APIs directly. And that was a description from a spreadsheet. Um, we can also verify that the category should be, I think science, actually, I don't know if that's on here or not. Uh, there we go. Yeah, and the category science technology was uh, properly identified, just category number 28. Um, so that is pretty much it. Um, not too bad, not too complicated of a process. It's a little bit, uh, uh, a little bit, not the most straightforward as far as like the some of the Google YouTube um, APIs, but uh, hopefully you can either pull those out of the uh, workflow itself, or again, I'll I'll probably just provide a link uh, in the description to make it a little bit easier. Um, but otherwise, uh, this should hopefully be a, a much more stable and uh, hopefully a little more flexible as far as being able to handle like really huge files to upload to YouTube. I think there's something like a 256 gigabyte limit on daily upload, so you could actually upload a lot of videos doing this daily. Uh, and then there's also like a YouTube quota system, I think, where it's like every upload costs like 50, 50 points and there's like a total of a thousand a day. So you could do this a few times a day as well. So, um, but yeah, hopefully uh, this was helpful. Again, I saw, you know, a few different comments saying that they're having some issues with the, the YouTube upload process through NADN. So kind of continue to use NADN, but actually use it uh, to call APIs directly. So hopefully this is a little bit more stable or a good workaround. Um, but Thank you for the comments. Uh, definitely appreciate uh, appreciate the feedback. Um, so I will continue to uh, look for comments like that. Hopefully continue to create more tutorials like this. So uh, please let me know if there's anything else you would like to see. And I appreciate you watching. I will see you in the next one.